Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hello, I am Anthony D. Smith, and I've got a special guest with me on the line for this show today. His name is David Libby. Uh, David is an award-winning communications executive that has successfully worked with large-scale, mid-sized, and startup companies. He's a seasoned public relations veteran known for his exceptional uh, strategic, creative, and media relations skills. A data-driven social media pioneer, expert, and speaker, David brings a unique blend of cross-channel expertise to build, execute, and advance fully integrated communications programs that deliver measurable returns. A go-to-market expert, David has an exceptional track record around building, executing, and scaling highly successful launches for new products, platforms, applications, and services. He successfully helped clients define and communicate their position and break out, leading to successful IPOs, acquisitions, and market leadership positioning. A personable, enthusiastic, and tenacious client advocate, David leaves no stone unturned and has a standout ability to create focus and move things forward to help his clients achieve their goals. David, it is great to have you on the show with us today. Thank you, Anthony. You're very welcome. So let's kick things off by asking you, who is your perfect prospect and how do you help them succeed? The, the perfect prospect is a company, a technology company, startup or mid-size, that really understands the value of public relations, that understands the value of marketing and has a, a story to tell or has the component of a story to tell and wants to work with the PR person to understand how to tell that story. Okay, now, I know you had said also that they struggle with, uh, one of their biggest struggles is also getting started. And uh, what, what is their biggest struggle with getting started in PR? Uh, my experience has been that most technology startup CEOs are very good about the technology. Um, they understand the business. They have a harder time, and this is, you know, I, I don't want to put everyone in the same basket, but um, a number of these startups have a hard time understanding or seeing where they could kick off the PR. They, they have a better grasp of the marketing. It's more tangible. Um, they look at it from a, here's collateral, here's messaging, here's imagery, you know, here's an event we can sponsor. But when it comes to public relations, you know, it's, it's, um, it's more editorialized. It's, it's, there, it's out of their control um, somewhat, so they don't know where to start. They don't know if they should start by announcing a press release and how do they do that, or if they should start by doing PR around an event they're attending. If they can, if they've thought of that, they don't know if they can start with a partner um, or even even with a blog. I mean, just, it just depends upon what they have going on as it relates to what their objectives are. Um, and how we can help them. Um, what do you say to somebody who feels that they really don't have anything particularly newsworthy to talk about or to publish about or to get them positioning, et cetera? You know, in some cases, it's it's formulaic where, you know, they have um, uh, interest from a particular investor or they've got a particular partner on board um, or there's some sort of event that you know is happening or that may happen um, that's out of their control that is a launching pad for them and then in some cases to your point Anthony you know it's it's a lot less um, tangible they really don't know what their new story is they don't know um, what story they can tell and you know it's a matter of really taking a step back looking at their messaging looking at the competitive landscape looking at the market outside of the competitive landscape um, to see what is really being talked about not talked about and then discovering opportunities and um, presenting those to the client and, and seeing if that's, you know, um, a good strategy for helping them grow their business until they do have a new story or, just in, you know, until they're at that point where they've got something bigger to talk about. Let me ask you this. When clients come to you, what are the two or three biggest questions that they have about getting started? The two biggest things that they always ask you uh, about engaging in a PR campaign or getting started um, or just doing something that can promote their business or get them the investors, uh, et cetera? 
Um, I'd say that the two biggest questions they have are, have we worked in this space before? So we were approached by a, a prospect in the financial services sector. Do we have financial services experience um, in, in this particular area? Do we understand what they're doing? The second thing is, um, I'm going to say we, we're a consultancy, so it's the world we, it's the consultants that work with me. It's, uh, you know, it's um, a little more fluid. Um, and the second biggest question we have is what relationships do we have, if any, um, with the people who write about their sector or have written about their sector? And, you know, often because we're working with startups, Anthony, we're asked to come into an emerging market. And, you know, years ago it was online gaming and we were brought into that. And then it was, you know, mobile payment and cloud computing and big data and, you know, data security and, so, you know, for a consultant to start with, you know, having no experience or very little experience, um, which, which in many cases we don't, we have more than, than I would say in, in those areas, but then to, you know, say that we have relationships, you know, with you know, XYZ at this publication or that broadcast station, you know, it really comes back to the, the team, the, 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 us and the client. I mean, do, not only do we have the relationship, do we have the experience? Do they have what it takes? Are they going to give us information um, to help um, us earn the right to get covered by that publication or get on that TV show? You know, I've had experiences where, yes, I have a relationship with, you know, a particular producer at a TV um, station, and he's got a technology program, and, you know, he has done segments on uh, clients like these, but, you know, this particular client isn't ready. Um, so, you know, we're not going to pitch that client to that TV producer. We're going to work with the client to get ready to pitch that particular person. Or, you know, the same is true where we haven't had a relationship um, years ago in, you know, the a big data um, opportunity. And, you know, we worked with a client that had a great story to tell. We helped him formulate a story working with his marketing team. And then we're able to convince a reporter that this is a conversation worth having. You know, if anything, the reporter would learn a lot more about the space, even if he didn't write anything, by speaking to our client. Um, he did write a nice feature. Um, but, you know, now we have a great relationship with that reporter, one of the top reporters in that particular sector. So, you know, it, it, it's definitely it's the relationship between the two entities and, and how it evolves. And I know that also I think uh, one of the biggest questions I think I've noticed people ask about Anything to do with public relations is how long. How long does it take? Yeah, and you know, it, it's a. I love the question because I've worked for you know small agencies, I've worked for mid-sized agencies, and I've worked for large agencies with you know twenty six hundred people. Every agency has a different answer. Some agencies will tell you, well, you know, or even consultants will tell you, you know, you give me give me a project, and I can get you into these publications potentially. And it'll take, you know, maybe two to four weeks. Um, some will say, well, it could take up to three months. Some will say, sign with us for uh, six months to a year. You know, and I generally don't like to say, oh, it's going to take this amount of time. And what they don't seem to realize is that public relations is an evolution, not a revolution. And so it takes a, a gradual climb um, from one point to the next to the next to tell a story. I generally like to say to a prospect or to a client, you know, let's see what you have. Let's, let's, let's look at what we're working with. Um, let's look at the success your competitors have had with similar announcements in the past. Um, let's look at, you know, the messaging. Let's look at the timing. Um, let's look at whether or not you've got, you know, the beta customer on board or the partner on board or the investor on board to be able to lend support, um, whether it's quotes or help with the press to get coverage that you're aspiring to get. So, you know, it could take a month. It could take three months. Um, with that said, however, typically in, um, in, in a down market, the, the clients will want, you know, opportunities to happen faster because they're more desperate. Um, and in a better market like we're seeing today, the clients will be more patient with the evolutionary process of public relations that rolls out, um, which doesn't make me any less aggressive about getting them pressed sooner because, again, evolution, not a revolution. So we want to, as soon as we can, start building that story, start getting them hit as it is strategic help them build their business, not just for the sake of getting hits, as we call it, um, press coverage. Um, so, you know, in either in their case, I, I certainly don't guarantee immediately media coverage, but I certainly would encourage 
client and the PR person to be focused on how soon they can get press for their clients. What I love about what you're saying is you said this a couple times. You're talking about uh, evolution versus uh, uh, what revolution. Do you use? Evo- revolution. Evolution versus revolution, and I love that. Can you go into more on that concept and what that means, like the development of that process? Because I think one is more of a development, one is more of like a big-time crusade. And I feel like that when it comes to PR, what the people that get into the mindset of the uh, revolution is that they always see the end results of all their competitors, and it yeah. looks like a revolution. But can you talk more and, and, and embellish more on the difference between uh, evolution versus revolution? And what that's Absolutely. Like? Absolutely. The, and I'll tell you this, this is a uh, very, it's, it's kind of one of my hot topics because it, it gets me kind of flustered. Because, and, and the reason being is because when a prospect or a client says, what relationships do we have? In the back of my mind, I'm thinking, this whole thing is a relationship. I mean, relationships with the press, relationships with the potential investors, with the current investors, with the potential partners, with the partners, with the customers, every aspect of communications, whether it's public relations or marketing or social media, is about building relationships over a period of time and improving those relationships. I don't mean improving them like, you know, inviting somebody from the street into your home, but improving them to get to know you better as a company um, as what value you can provide to all these audiences. And you know, any, anyone who thinks that they can you know, revolutionize um, communication by just you know, dropping a, 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 a one-ton ball into, a, a, um, into a, an ocean and thinking they're going to make a big enough splash to cause a, a ripple effect to last a long period of time is kidding themselves. And this is an evolutionary process. We're talking about not just dropping one ton ball. We're talking about dropping, you know, balls. A little, you know, we're talking about building momentum over a period of time, creating a ripple effect that continues as you would have a conversation and a relationship with a friend or with a family member that grows over a period of time where they get to know you, they get to know more about your interests, your hobbies, your successes, you as a person, and they love you. They want to be a part of you. They want to be around you. The same is the same is true of these companies. You know, when you see a company at its apex, and I can, you know, just not to mention any company names, but I know quite a few that, you know, a client will look at them and say, "Wow, look at that company! Look how great they've done!" And I always look back um, across all their press releases back to day one, all their press back to day one, and I go back to the client and say, "Okay, this is what we're looking at. I, I see you're looking at this, you know, giant splash in the water in the last week, but if you look at all these ripples over the last." five years, you know, you can really establish a pattern is really what it comes down to for growth. And, you know, that's not something that um, is necessarily um, anything that an individual or a team can do overnight. Um, there's a lot of factors that go into play, right? There's, you know, the factors of, you know, the, the savviness of the PR team, the savviness of the, the executive management of the company, the market, the timing. Uh, there's all sorts of different aspects happening at the same time, which is why I think you know there are so few many so, so few success stories, but there's some pretty big ones. So we always focus on those. Um, but the diff- different, and just to go back to your question, you know, the, the evolutionary stage of it is is really much more compelling than the revolutionary stage because then what does it lead to? It leads to an exit strategy, and that's really at the end of the day what everyone's looking at acquisition, or it could be funding, or it could be, you know, uh, you know um, a partnership. It could be any kind of exit strategy for these executives, uh, IPO, um, that really, you know, help define their company, define their career. And that doesn't happen through any kind of revolution. Um, it only happens through an evolution of the PR marketing. That is amazing. Um, let, me, let me go even further on this. And... It basically sounds like a ripple effect. Like, you know, there's one ball drops into the air, one stone skips in the ocean, then another, then another, then another, then another. And when you add all these ripples together, it looks like a big splash and might even lead to a big splash even all at once, um, which I'm, I'm guessing you find happens more often than not is sort of how it works out. But can you mm-hmm. talk about how many different ways are there to – how many different ways are there to make a ripple in that ocean that they're trying to make this big splash inside of? You bet. There's many different ways. <laughs> um, 
So, you know, there's a, there's a very famous company online that became famous because they were sued by a major broadcast company. Um, there's another company that became famous because uh, a pilot landed a plane in the Hudson River. And, you know, the story broke um, on that platform. Uh, then there's, you know, uh, another company that was very successful because its competitor was so incredibly successful that that company rode on its competitor's coattails, which the competitor admittedly said he was very upset at. Um, and that second company actually ended up IPOing very close to the first company and then was acquired for a billion dollars about five years later. Um, and, you know, it's, it's so... What's that? What were the names of those companies? Well, the first company I talked about was um, YouTube, where, you know, NBC sued them and all of a sudden YouTube became, went on the map. Um, Twitter broke out because Scully landed the plane on the Hudson and someone tweeted about it. Um, right now, Technologies um, arguably was a very successful company in its own right, but it, it inspired to be like Salesforce. It rode on its coattails and IPO'd uh, right after Salesforce and became one of the top five IPOs of that year and then was acquired for a billion dollars by Oracle years later. And, you know, what's consistent with all these companies, and again, I, I find this fascinating and most executives don't want to, maybe don't understand this, is it's so, it's so not about the PR. You know, if that, and, and, and I mean, that in itself is a good blog post. It's so much about the company's story. The PR is telling the story. The PR is a vehicle that is being used to tell the story. And yeah, granted, the PR people need to be strategic about how they tell that story, who they tell that story to. Um, so, you know, there's a skill set in that. However, you know, I would argue that, you know, without that story, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a hard sell. Um, you, know, there needs to, you know, there needs to be um, something unique, something that's different about those particular companies to help them break out um, and, you know, then grow over a period of time, as you mentioned, in that ripple effect versus just, you know, revolutionizing, you know, the way we do things. That, you know, it goes kind of hand in hand with, you know, a company can be disruptive, um, but they also have to prove that their disruption is going to stick and that this is a market that makes sense, um, that's viable, that's credible, um, that is profitable. You know, the, all these other aspects are very important and, you know, how PR, you know, shares that with the world again, goes back to the skill and strategy of the PR people, um, but not without the story that the company's telling. I'm trying to think of one more, one more uh, there's another company, um, that one of our clients was uh, very excited, I'm just blanking on the company name, but um, you know, they've had a very good run, and well, they launched by announcing they got investment from Ashton Kutcher and other high-profile entertainment investors, right? So, you know, that put them in the big leagues kind of overnight, and they got a major client overnight. It seemed like overnight, at least um, from a PR perspective. Um, it probably wasn't from a business development perspective. It probably took months or years. But then PR was pretty much on its surfboard, right? Kind of, you know, surfing those waves as they come, trying to, you know, stay on the wave and um, keep surfing. So, you know, that's another example of, uh, of, a, of a success from a company. Let me, uh, now let me switch gears on you a little bit. Uh, can you tell me one or two misconceptions that people in your market, that your prospects have uh, about uh, getting positive PR or getting started or keeping it going? What are some popular misconceptions that they usually bring to the table up front? Yeah, I would say, unfortunately, one of the biggest misconceptions is that PR is going to drive sales. And and, you know, I don't want to say it's not going to generate leads and interest in the company because that's definitely true. But driving sales, I think it takes a more uh, integrated approach from having, you know, the sale, a sales team, a marketing team um, work with a PR team to come up with an integrated, consistent, cohesive program that, you know, where PR may generate leads, you know, marketing is really at the forefront of that, working with PR to generate leads, and on PR is only one aspect of marketing, right? Um, and then sales takes those leads and then qualifies those leads and then sells and closes those leads. And I think some startups are, you know, they're in the position to think, well, you know, we get PR on board, 
and you know that's going to help us build our business overnight. Um, that's one misconception. The second misconception that I you know I hate I hate to hear it, but I hear it often is uh, that PR is going to help differentiate a company and put it on the map. And again, I you know I, I think it is possible, but it goes back to the company story and how it's told. I don't think that told necessarily in a silo. I think that's also told by the integration of marketing and social media and advertising, um, event marketing. Uh, I don't think PR alone should be responsible um, for helping define the company's position in the market. They, you know, need to be competitive. I don't think that's possible um, for long-term success. So I love that. It's, uh, basically, what I hear you saying is that PR is like a step in the beginning of uh, generating interest in the company or making people respect the company or like the company. It's a step to getting leads, um, but it doesn't close the sale. And I think that's a really important point because I've noticed that even just with interviews that I've done with other people that uh, some people even come on the show and they think, oh, my God, I'm on the show. I'm going to get all these sales. Right. Uh, this is for you to, you know, sort of extend your your uh, your position as an educator and advocate to the success of your prospects. And I think it goes across the board, even people who've been on big shows like Oprah. You know, they yeah. might get a spike of sales that day, but then it almost immediately goes back down to where it was. Well, that, that's what I say to that's what I say to prospects and clients all the time. Well, if you know, if if you're not looking, I understand what you can and can cannot control. I, I get that. But if you're not looking out at the horizon and you're only looking down inside your boat, you might crash. You have to have an, one eye on where you're at and one eye on where you're going. Even you know, essentially, you need to chart a course and to assume that you know, whether it's because a company or an individual has a low budget um, and PR is relatively inexpensive compared to other marketing disciplines and they think that you know, getting some press is going to be, you know, or even getting an Oprah is going to define them, the challenge with that, Anthony, is that they're not looking at what's next. And if they're not looking at what's next, they're not planning. Even if the plans don't turn out like they hope, because you know what, they never do. Let's say, well, let's never say never. They, ha- they hardly ever do. At least they have a very good idea. Uh, and at least they're mapping a course for where they want to be so it's more than likely, maybe not highly likely and not perfect, of course, but it's more than likely that when, they're, when they've been on Oprah, that they're already scoping out what is next in their business that can help them be on the next program that they would be on after Oprah, or where do they go from Oprah? Where do they go from, you know, your radio show? You know, what's, what's that evolution look like? And unfortunately, I hear that, you know, these companies don't have the resources to think like that. And I, I think it's less about resources it's more about priorities. It's more about focus. You know, if, if you, I, I did this exercise with a friend actually recently of all, of all people. Um, and you know, he, he, I'm a former psychology major and I worked on a maximum security schizophrenic ward and I helped, um, a little tangent here, but I worked with a former dean of the neuropsychiatric institute at UCLA to help him offer a book. And you know, with all that experience, you know, if somebody comes to me and they say, I'm having trouble staying focused right now, I'm, you know, I sat down with this guy and said, okay, let's look at the last six months of your life. Let's look at where you had success staying focused. Let's look at your growth in the last six months. Let's not focus on what you haven't done, what hasn't worked out for you. Let's focus, out, let's focus on the, the positive pieces of your life that got you to this moment right now. Um, and in doing that, you know, he looked at it and said, oh, you know, I, I had a vacation here and I did some work here and I had, you know, I, I had this opportunity to, you know, probably see my daughter here and blah, 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 blah. And all of a sudden, that's why I'm sitting here now and I'm at this stage. Same thing with the business. It's, it's about charting a path. It's not about saying, I'm going to just throw something out there. It's going to be great for me. I'm going to be very successful. And that's it. Unless that's what you want, right? You look at some people that have been on Shark Tank, and they purposely, I'll bet you, that a percentage of those people that go on Shark Tank don't even want the investment. As a matter of fact, the money they're asking for seems laughable in so many times. They're on that show for the publicity. They know that if they get on that show, they will get a percentage of uptick in sales that will help them generate enough revenue to be able to pull together a cycle of product to help them blah, 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 right? It's, you know, and that, that, that's the strategy in itself. They may not want to be on any other show ever. They may not want to get any other PR ever, or at least not for a long time. Um, and if that works for them, that's great. If that's their goal, that's great. But typically in a technology startup, that's really not the way a business operates if it wants to be sustainable over a period of time. 
you know, it's amazing how many people don't think of stuff like that. And when you're watching, even even in your line of work, it's, it's it might be easy to look at people on the show and be like, why in the world did they ever go there? And then it dawns on you, oh, they probably didn't really care about the actual the actual dollar amount or investment from some big celebrity. Um, there's so many different angles in PR, uh, so many different ways to leverage media uh, to really get what your your goals are. That it's just it's unreal how many companies still don't do it. I find I find that fascinating too, and you know it's 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 not the fault of anyone. You know it's it's not um, it's not a blame game. It's it's culture. It's it's you know it's sometimes an executive CEO will be very technology focused, really not understand marketing, or he or she will have their own way of doing what they think is marketing, um, or they you know it's it's just it's a very complex dynamic when. People are people come together and they're expected to you know buy into one way of thinking um, and you know they put all their eggs in one basket when they do a launch and sometimes it works out sometimes it doesn't um, and, and you know I've, I've had clients say to me I've, I've fired my last three PR firms um, what can you do better you know and that's never a good way to start a relationship right because then I think to myself well maybe it's not so much the PR firms it's more about the culture of the company and do we need to look at PR differently than they have in the past, or do they even need PR? Um, uh, you know, that's, you know, and, and in that case, maybe, you know, is it more about content development? Is, it, is, is that the strategy? Um, and does that then fold into a PR strategy? We had a client that really had a hard time kind of thinking about PR and what kind of PR they could get besides their aspiration, which was to be in the Wall Street Journal, which is just totally untainable for them at that time. And we said, start building out your content, start building out your blog post, start building out press release to start building out articles that, you know, you're writing um, to get into publications and, you know, that potentially could lead to contributed articles we could submit for consideration of publications, blog posts that might be um, picked up by a tech publication and quoted or a press release that might have legs, might have a good news angle to it that could be a differentiator in in the marketplace. Um, So it's, you know, and I, I just, I, I roll my eyes to myself when I hear this, you know, like you said, you know, sometimes they don't get it, but at the same time, I think to myself, well, maybe here's an opportunity to teach them, you know, how to get it. Let me ask you this. Um, obviously, uh, you can you can confidently look at any one of your prospects in the eye, and you can confidently say that you can help them. Um, what would you say is the most common reason why your prospect doesn't buy from you? Um, is it price, time commitment, what people will think? Uh, do they think it won't work? What is the most common reason that they don't buy from you? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I think that the main reason is they just, we just don't gel. And I think, you know, you know some, some dogs sniff butts and they just bark at each other. And I think the main reason is that at the end of the day, you know, I've been doing PR for over 20 years. And I've done a lot of different kinds of PR. And um, you know, for someone to tell me that they don't want to work with me, generally because we just don't see eye to eye, you know, um, because I've been in situations where actually most in the last three months where a CEO says, well, I know you really don't have the kind of experience that we're looking for, but I like you and I, you know, I, I like what you've done with other companies, um, so we'd like to hire you um, because we'd like to give this a shot. We think we can, you know, you'll, learn this space pretty quickly um, on your own end with us and, you know, we've got a good story to tell. So, you know, and that was, it just comes down to personalities. And the key word that, you know, if I was writing a book I would use would be trust. You have to find someone when you work with a PR person that you trust. You have to trust that no matter what, they're going to focus on your business as you would focus on your business. They're going to put their heart and soul into making you and your company successful as they would make themselves successful. You know, when I worked in entertainment years ago, we used to have a saying, we'd say, the actors and actresses we work with are only as good as their last movies. Same thing in the tech sector. You're only as good as your last announcement. You're only, only as good as your last PR play. You're only as good as your last partnership. You know, it's the same thing. And it comes down to trust. You have to trust that the people that you're working with, whether it's PR, marketing, advertising, any one of those disciplines, really has your back really is looking at every way ethically they can get 
you press and help you be successful? So I think that's I think that's powerful. Let me ask you. Uh, obviously, you definitely uh, you definitely know PR uh, inside and out. Uh, let me ask you: What led you to doing what you do today? What led you into the PR industry? So how did I start out in this business? Well, there, there's there's definitely some people in my life that have just been mentors that I I'm so grateful for that I I couldn't thank enough. Um, one of them is Dale C. Olson, uh, who gave me my first job in public relations. And the best thing he said to me was that he wasn't going to teach me how to do his job because he didn't have the time or the interest. Um, I would have to learn it by watching him do his work. And, in, you know, how does a person learn? They learn through failure. And I learned so many times, let me tell you, through making mistakes um, and not making that same mistake twice and growing very quickly from being a receptionist to a publicist at his firm. Um, John Blanchett is another mentor of mine. He uh, was Joshua Gabor's publicist for years. He taught me how to write, how to look at the big picture. Uh, another gentleman, Eugene Harbin, he taught me how to look at the business of public relations. And then I would say after that experience, being recruited up to the Bay Area to work with Pixar Animation Studios, I would say Steve Jobs, when I worked with Steve, he taught me how to be a, how to how to be comfortable being a maverick. How to you know how to um, he he had his own truth. You know he 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 knew really how to tell a story, and he really knew how to help uh, an audience understand how to look at um, what think differently and how it could be better for many people, not just for a select group. And what we did together um, was just redefined, you know, how I looked at PR. Um, it, it made me realize that, you know, you could be ethical. You can, you can, um, you can really put your opinion. You can, you can take healthy risks. You can push the envelope, and you can get pushed back, and you can push harder, um, and you can really get someone to believe in your way of thinking. And, and change, and change businesses, and change markets, um, and that that in itself just it, it's it, it's I think those combined experiences and mentors I've had. Uh, Dale Olson was very much this way as well, and so was John Blanchett. You know, pull that AP reporter into the into the event. You know, um, kind of go go a little bit further than what you think you can do. Um, See, so test test test. You, know, you might lose the client too, but you know, really push the envelope. You know, try and try and do something different. Try and stand out. Um, and that just that drives me every day. It just makes make it really is what led me to do what I do today to really help startups and mid-sized companies really understand that you know they can be differentiated um, and they can really you know put themselves on the map um, in, in their in their market in in, in business. So how can they find out more about you? If they want to look you up or know more, where can they go? What can they do? We have a website at www.twopins.com, and two pins is the number two, P for Peter, I-N-Z, dot com. Um, or your listeners are really welcome to find me on LinkedIn. Um, just let me know that you uh, heard the radio show on LinkedIn. I'd be happy to you know, connect with you and uh, help you in any way. And I'm, you know, just a downright nice person. So if, you know, anyone has any questions or, or comments, um, you know, if they want to ask through you, Anthony, or through my LinkedIn channel um, or through our website, I'm happy to provide them any more background or any more uh, uh, answers to, to PR questions beyond what we discussed today. Absolutely. And that, that is something that if you are uh, a business or company or uh, the representative uh, that gets the ball rolling in that department and you want to know more about David or what he can do for you, uh, he's definitely got way more uh, valuable information to share, and I know that he can definitely help you out. 
Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.